But the greatest warhorse of all time, the highest ranking animal in Marine Corps history, and the hero of Outpost Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Reckless. Yo, horse. Is a horse actually Sergeant Reckless? <laughs> yeah. I like that they call it a sergeant. There must be a reason behind that name. And we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. The story takes place during the Korean War, which is kind of an issue because most people know absolutely nothing about the Korean War, and it's kind of important for context. So, we're gonna do a real quick and dirty oversimplification of the entire thing. Super casual, 60 seconds. We're gonna learn more about the Korean War than most people do in their entire K through 12 education. Teach us. Start the timer, here we go. July 25th, 1950. Communist North Korea, backed by Communist China, and the Soviet Union decides that they are going to attack South Korea and try to take over the entire peninsula. Over the course of the next five to six weeks, they would almost accomplish their goal, beating the South Korean military all the way to the base of the peninsula, um, and it is not looking good. But uh, luckily, NATO shows up at the last minute to save the day. The NATO forces are like 90% American, but there's also some British, some Canadian, some Australian, and like 12 other countries on top of that. And they have a huge amphibious landing in Incheon, and they proceed to turn the tables on the North Koreans entirely, beating them all the way back into North Korea and then they continue to advance, beating them all the way up the peninsula and almost to the border of China. So now the Chinese government's kind of shitting their pants because NATO's like 30 miles off their border and they can't have NATO coming up in their territory with their, their democracy and their human rights <laughs> and their food. They've got to do something. <laughs> They're like, don't bring your human rights over here. We don't like human rights something about this. So China comes out of left field with their big ass military, joins the fight, takes NATO completely by surprise, beats them all the way back down the peninsula to pretty much the original North and South Korean border. And this is where our story begins. I'm not trying to brag, but that was under 60 seconds and I got a Lord of the Rings reference. No, 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 no. a really good day. Okay, now that we're on the <laughs> side, okay, <laughs> here's what the front line looks like. Each one of those triangles represents a hill and on top of those hills is a bunch of NATO troops. Basically at this point in time, NATO is now just trying to hold this line long enough to force the communists to sign a peace treaty and preserve South Korea because mm. as it turns out this long string of hills is almost the exact same border that South Korea was before so if they can utilize these hills to hold the high ground maybe they can get this accomplished why do they want to hold the high ground well because the high ground's awesome isn't it Anakin yeah, anyways, if I can bring your attention to the furthest triangle on the left where it says the Nevada cities. That is not actually one hill, but three smaller hills in a close triangular formation, commonly referred to as the Iron Triangle. Each one of these hills is named after one of the three Nevada gambling cities, Reno, Carson, and Vegas. The reason that NATO named them after the Nevada gambling cities is because it is a gamble as to whether or not the Marine Corps is going to be able to hold that position. Because if Chinese communist forces are going to try to break through this line, it's probably going to be right there at the Nevada cities because then they will have a direct path to the capital of Seoul, and if they're able to capture Seoul, it'll be absolutely devastating to NATO's ability to negotiate a peace treaty. So the United mm. States Marine Corps absolutely has to hold this position, and most importantly, they have to hold outpost Vegas because it is the highest of the three hills, and if they lose Vegas, they are almost guaranteed to lose the other two. All right, so here's the plan. Each one of these hills is going to have 40 Marines and two Navy corpsmen on top. These Damn, hills are so steep that the only way to get up there is by foot. They're like a 45 degree angle all the way up. So no way. the Marines aren't able to get trucks up there. They're not able to get tanks up there. The only thing they can get up there is barbed wire, shovels for digging trenches, guns, and 75 millimeter recoilless rifles. These recoilless rifles are pretty much gonna be the Marines only chance of defending themselves if they do get attacked. The problem with it is though, since you can't get a truck up on this hill, now the Marines have to carry all the ammunition up themselves. That must have been so exhausting, like physically. Then again, they train a lot, so I'm sure they were able to do it, but just generally, that sounds exhausting. Like you said, they are trained to do this stuff, yeah. so... But carrying the guns up that steepness must yeah. be a lot. Yeah, because you're, you're putting work into your body by walking up this steep yeah, hill. On top of that, you're carrying heavy equipment as well. Yeah, in a heavy uh, outfit. Yeah. Well, what's the word? Oh, there's a word. Okay, yeah, soldier... What it vest? No, soldier attire. There's an actual word for it. Outfit? No, it's not outfit. Uniform? <laughs> uniform. Uniform. That's it, sorry. Uniform. Yeah. <laughs> and each shell weighs approximately 24 pounds. So because carrying Damn. these shells up this enormous hill one or two at a time absolutely sucks, the Marines get permission to buy a horse or a mule or a donkey or something. So they go down to Seoul and they start looking. And obviously the first place they choose to investigate is the horse racetrack at Seoul. Clever. Is there probably going to be a pack animal at a racetrack for sale? 
No, probably not, because that's racehorses, and racehorses don't make good pack animals, but that is the one place that's going to have alcohol and gambling, so you best believe that's where the Marines are going to check first. <laughs> but as fate would have it, they would meet up with a horse trainer and jockey by the name of Kim Hook Moon, who would be willing to reluctantly sell his horse Ah Chim Hai, which translates to flame in the morning. He absolutely did not want to sell this horse. He described it as the most beautiful and intelligent horse on the planet, Aww. but he did it for $250 because he had to buy his sister a prosthetic leg. I believe her name was Peggy, or was it Eileen? Anyways, the Marines buy this oh, horse, God. they throw her in a trailer, <laughs> and they take her back to camp. From there, she immediately goes into what the Marines call hoof camp. Get it? Hoof camp, boot camp. That's funny. Moving on. Okay. The first thing they do is try to get the horse acclimated to battle by firing the recoilless rifle near her. And the first time they fired this rifle, this horse jumped four feet straight into the air and freaked the fuck out. Any, I think any animal would though. Any animal that's especially not used to that sound. Yeah, because this is a racing horse. They're not used to hearing bullets, bombs. So this is a new sound for them. It's clever by the soldiers to, you know, start there though, because yeah. they're going to have to get used to the sound. Yeah. Then they calmed her down. They fired it again. Still scared out of her mind. And they fired it again oh, and horse. again. And by the eighth time they fired it, she was completely calm and a recoilless rifle never scared her ever again. Wow. From there, they taught her how to survive. She learned how to avoid barbed wire. She learned not to get what? too close to the back end of the recoilless rifles sick. because the blowback could hurt her. She learned that whenever a Marine yelled incoming, she needed to run to a nearby bunker. Or if she wasn't near a bunker, she learned how to lay down. After she can- Nah, this horse is starting to get- So this is Sergeant Reckless. This is a military horse now. Yes. <laughs> is there no normal horse? She's thinking, hmm, I think I could get used to this I'm being learning, off the tracks. Learning so much. Yeah. Completed her training, the Marines ordered her a special saddle to be made and shipped all the way from America that would allow her to carry a bunch of recoilless rifle rounds. Mm. Until then, though, she began helping the Marines any way she could, mainly by helping string communications cable between the different outposts and the ammunition point, and she could string more cable than 10 men combined. At this point, the ah. Marines really, really started to like this horse, so they decided they were going to give her a new name. Reckless, named after the recoilless rifles, I which like are commonly that. referred to as reckless rifles. And from that point on, she just became another one of the guys, and that's exactly how the <laughs> Marines started treating her. She began eating whatever the Marines were eating. She Burgers, chips. This horse is living some alcohol, maybe. <laughs> oh, give Sh yo, give me some of that. Re reckless needs a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loved bacon and eggs. She loved beer, and That's apparently, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Had mixed drinks. Reckless would walk up to you nudge you with her head and stick out her lower lip and let you mix a mixed drink directly into her mouth. Then oh her special God. saddle shows up and she starts kicking ass on the battlefield. She delivers six rounds at a time and she can make a trip from the ammo point to the firing position twice as fast as any man can and he's only carrying two rounds. She delivers so much ammo that over the course of a couple battles the Chinese actually start to target Reckless. And this no. ends up being a horrific mistake because the millisecond that Marine Corps leadership figures out that they're trying to target Reckless, they flip the script, turn around to the Marines, and they're like, boys, they're trying to kill Reckless so they can eat her because they're starving communists. And <laughs> um, we know Chinese eat dogs, they eat loads of animals. Let's just say their palate's quite open. Yeah, I've yeah. seen kids of Chinese kids eating like birds' heads off and bats and everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. point, all the Marines responded with <laughs> Rambo mode. <laughs> No one's the Marines are absolutely furious. This is worse than fucking with Doc. We've got multiple Docs. We've only got one Reckless. We can't yep. allow this to happen. And the Marines begin fighting that much harder. And they have more ammo to fight even harder with because Reckless is right there with them, bearing ammo the entire time. From this point on, they begin dominating every skirmish that they take part in. At one point, they're working adjacent to the Australian military, and the Australians are so blown away by Reckless that they come up to meet her after the skirmish, and they actually give her one of their campaign hats as a reward <laughs> for being such a badass on the Go Reckless. Reckless and the Marines fight and hold the line for the next five months and by March of 1953, peace talks between North and South Korea are well underway and it's beginning to finally look like this war might come to a peaceful resolution. But on March 26th, Chinese forces would launch a major offensive trying to break through the line at the Nevada City uh -oh. with 4,000 men. For the next four days, the Marines so and the Chinese fight over these hills. The Chinese take the hill, the Marines take it back. The Chinese take the hill, the Marines take it back. 
back. Eventually, it got to the point where nobody could hold the top of the hill, and you just had the Chinese on one slope of the hill and the Marines on the other. They said that there was so much artillery flying in both directions for the entirety of four days that the sound of individual explosions gave way to what seemed like a constant and consistent roar. For four days, they were completely unable to verbally communicate, and they could only talk to each other via hand signals. And because That's of all this crazy. noise, the Marine Corps forward observers weren't able to effectively communicate with the Marine Corps artillery and mortars, meaning that the artillery and mortars were just firing blindly into the general vicinity of where the enemy should be. Meaning that the only effective fire the Marine Corps has in this fight is coming from the recoilless rifles because they don't require a forward observer and they don't require communication. The men with the recoilless rifles are the ones spotting the enemy and firing the gun. The recoilless mm. rifles are now the key to winning this battle and they absolutely have to stay up and running and they have to get this ammunition up to these hills to fight back. The problem is the ammo point is 750 yards away from the firing position up a 45 degree angle hill that is constantly being pounded with enemy artillery fire yeah, while it's rough. also covered with smoke and white phosphorus. But that doesn't change the fact that the ammunition has to get there. So they load eight rounds into Reckless's pack and they send her up the hill and the men- Oh, it's risky for Reckless because a lot is happening and so much uh, bombs and grenades are probably being thrown to the point where could she get hit mm. on her journey? There's a high chance that she won't come back down. Well, let's find out. I'm sure Reckless... Come on, Reckless. She's bad at We're cheering for Reckless. Yeah. We want Reckless to win. And at the ammunition depot know that it's probably the last time they're ever going to see her again because oh. they've just sent her off to her death. But despite that, she somehow makes it to the firing position. The Marines there unload the ammo and stick a wounded Marine on her back as they send her back down the hill also feeling as though they're sending her to her death and it's the last time they're ever going to see their favorite horse. But they're wrong. Over and over and over again they're wrong because every 20 minutes like clockwork, Reckless is back Come in the position bringing more ammunition and then she's back at the ammunition depot dropping off wounded marines and she does this all day long and with every trip wow. she makes she becomes less and less of a horse and more and more the only sign of hope that these men have. Because of this little horse that's quite literally an animal of prey whose only defensive measure to danger is to run away can stand here and fight through all of this then yeah. fuck maybe they can too despite being struck by shrapnel twice reckless kept the marines so well stocked with ammunition that they managed to melt one of the barrels of the 75 millimeter recoilless rifles on the first day of battle alone Duh. she made 51 round trips to the firing line covering over 35 miles delivering 386 rounds of ammunition totaling over 9,000 pounds and that's not including all the marines that she carried back down the hill at the end of the first day of battle they took reckless gave her all the food and water that she would eat or she drink and then they down to bed she got to sleep for six hours before the first enemy artillery shell impacted and at that she was back up and ready to do it all over again and she repeated her performance from the day prior at the end of the second day nobody held outpost vegas at the top of the hill the chinese held one slope and the marines held the other and it is at this point that the marine corps leadership decided that if they can't hold the high ground there just isn't going to be a high ground anymore mm. they called in the marine air wing and on the morning of the third day of battle the marine corps dropped 28 tons of ordnance on top of the hill completely leveling every defensive structure and anything else that was up there that's a smart move because if china did get that hill like and they've many managed to sustain the position and hold their position the navy would have been screwed there yeah because high ground is a massive thing when it comes to wars mm. it, it gives you more visibility it's easier to shoot down at rather than shooting up at in terms of accuracy it's just such a big advantage yeah i agree by the end of the third day, the Marines had taken the top of the hill where Outpost Vegas used to be. But then they saw that the Chinese were falling back into a ravine and they were going to go around the hill entirely. This is absolutely terrible because there aren't enough Marines on Outpost Vegas, Carson, and Reno combined to be able to go down there and stop the Chinese. If they're going to stand any chance in a fight, they have to have the high ground, so they absolutely cannot give it up. The problem is, on the back side of the hill that Outpost Vegas is on is where the ammunition depot is, as well as a mess tent that's been converted into an aid station with over two 200 wounded marines and there's oh, nothing so that the marines on top of the outpost can do to stop them then the marines at outpost carson get an idea and they send a runner with a note to the aid station as fast as they can he gives a note to the commander of the aid station who then tries to read the note to all 200 wounded marines but the artillery fire is so loud that he can't be heard so he resorts to just handing the note to one marine who hands it to the next and the next and the next and after reading the note every marine hangs his head for a second and gets on his feet because the note reads Chinese coming around the hill, dropping smoke, walk out into the smoke, 
throw grenades at smell of garlic. Apparently the Chinese military at this point smelled like garlic. I have no <laughs> idea why, but <laughs> yo, we what well, night so Patty feels it was terrifying. The good thing about the Chinese soldiers, they chewed garlic like we chew gum. Oh, so you could smell them long before you got near you. <laughs> <laughs> It was a thing. And after all 200 Marines had read the note, they all stood up, grabbed every grenade that they could find, and began walking 500 yards out to where the smoke screen was. It's 11 o'clock at night, it's dark, it's eerie, it's dead silent, the Marines aren't saying a word because they all know that this is probably gonna be the end. They're calling for walking wounded to rejoin the fight, and that's never, ever a good thing. And they're making their way to this smoke screen, they finally get there and they take a few steps into the smoke, and they just stand there and they wait. And they wait. And after 10 minutes, there's a faint smell of garlic and it keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And the Marines know what's going to come next, but they just don't know when to start throwing these grenades. Ah. And then off in the distance in the smoke, they hear a single cough <laughs> and all the Marines just begin throwing these grenades into the smoke screen. Within a matter of seconds, they've completely exhausted their supply, throwing over 500 grenades into the smoke. What the and hell? that was it. There was nothing left to do, but stand there and wait. For the enemy to come and get them so that's what they did they stood there and they waited and they waited and the smell of garlic got a little bit fainter and a little bit fainter and finally the marines are like fuck it i'm going to bed so they walked back to the aid station went to bed woke up the next morning and holy shit the enemy artillery had completely stopped and the battle was over they would later find out that the chinese suffered over 4,000 casualties trying to break through the marine line and after the incident at 11 o'clock at night with the smoke screen in the aid station they simply could not afford to lose any more men and so those 500 grenades just randomly thrown in the smoke. Yeah, how Must have wiped out. Yeah. So many where they said, nah, we can't keep losing people like this. Yeah. So many deaths. It's crazy though. It's sad on both ends. We're forced to retreat. So that was it. The Marines did it. Against all odds, somehow the Marines managed to hold the line against a vastly superior force. Larger, larger force. <laughs> Wrong force. word. Very important detail. Preventing the enemy from retaking <laughs> Seoul, giving NATO the political leverage they needed to negotiate peace talks, and establishing and preserving the South Korea that we know today. And arguably, it's all because of a single horse that absolutely refused to give up on her fellow Marines. And because of this, Reckless is declared the hero of Outpost Vegas, and she Go is awarded Reckless. the rank of Corporal in the United States Marine Corps. Damn. Shortly after the battle, the Marines get rotated out by a brigade from the Turkish military, and the Marines finally get some much-deserved r are. After that, the war is really starting to wind down, so the Marines are going to pack up all their shit. They're going to board a Navy LST, which is basically an amphibious landing ship. That ship's going to take them all the way to Incheon, and then from there, they're just going to kind of hang out for a while and wait for the peace treaty to get signed. But since they're boarding a Navy vessel, they have to come up with a manifest of all the supplies, how many guys they got, all the equipment, how much everything weighs, yada, yada, yada. On the manifest, they write down one horse, reckless, corporal type. The manifest makes its way to the captain of the LST. He's supposed to sign off on everything. He sees horse and he's like, what the fuck? The Marines are probably <laughs> just messing with me. They're not actually bringing a horse on my ship. It's they probably are. just like a pallet of beer and they wanted to let me know to account for the weight. It's fine. He signs off on the manifest, sends it back. It's all good. Fast forward a couple of weeks, the Marines start loading <laughs> all their stuff up on the boat. Then they go to bring Corporal Reckless up onto the ship and the captain is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Absolutely not. You're not bringing a horse on but the ship. But he signed it, Sergeant. Nah, a horse is coming yeah. on, boy. And he signed it. And he signed yeah. it. And Sergeant Reckless was the hero of that story. Yep. Yeah. I've had the cleanest ship in the Navy for two years running, and this horse is going to ruin that. To which the Marines are like, bro, you signed the manifest. Yep. Yep. This is happening. Get over it. One thing leads to another. Corporal Reckless skips on that ship. Once they yes, get Reckless, Reckless, all the equipment and all the Marines on board, the ship takes off and all the Navy members are kind of making fun of Reckless and the Marines because it's not normal for Marines to care this much about an animal and they're not treating Reckless with the respect that she deserves. So oh. when they demand that Reckless gets fed bacon, eggs, and beer just like the Marines, the Navy absolutely refuses and they said they're only going to give her cabbage and wheat. So that's what they do. This upsets Reckless's stomach and she proceeds to shit all over <laughs> this boat for the next three days. Couple days later, reckless. From when you're feeding the healthy <laughs> stuff, she had beer. <laughs> yeah. She had. She got a human digestive system. Yeah, up. she's like, mm, this is great. She's getting cabbage. <laughs> cabbage oh, what the hell is this? Cabbage came out the. This ain't end. what I'm used to. <laughs> Give me some so, of that beer. That's actually hilarious. Starts feeling better. They're almost to Inchon. They're about to port. Get off this boat. Everything's gonna be great. At this point, the Marine Corps officers have a brilliant idea. They decide, hey, us and our men just went through one of the bloodiest battles in American military history. The horse has been sick this entire time. You know what would make everybody a lot happier? If instead of just 
parking the fucking boat and getting off like normal people, what if we did an amphibious landing, you know, for fun and training and stuff? Wouldn't that be great? To which all the enlisted men are like, fucking fine, whatever, let's just do it and get it over with. So they make an amphibious landing in Inchon My for God. training, but guess what? Reckless doesn't understand that it's for training. She thinks this shit's for real. So Reckless becomes the only horse in Marine Corps history to successfully make an amphibious landing. So the Marines get settled down in Inchon, How? and that's when they what? notice that there's a horse all over the news. It's in every newspaper, it's in every magazine, it's on every radio broadcast. I, the guy that saw that horse must be like, my horse is uh, living some next life. Oh, now. he must be proud of the horse yeah, though so when he read the papers. At the same time, it's against China at that point. Yeah. So he really sold America a weapon in a way. Without re Obviously, you don't realize that, right? Yeah. The entire world is talking about this horse, but it's not Corporal Reckless. It's some horse over in America called Native Dancer. It's the greatest horse in the world. It's going to win the Kentucky Derby, blah, blah, blah. And the Marines are kind of getting pissed because they know for a fact that they have the best horse in the world and it's Corporal Reckless, not Damn Native right. Dancer. And the Marines are willing to put their money where their mouth is because they pull together over $25,000, which is like over a quarter million dollars in today's money. And they the publicly hell? offer it up as a wager to the owner of Native Dancer Hey, bring your horse over to South Korea, beat Reckless in a race, and you can have the money. But this wasn't just going to be in the race. This was going to be called the Paddy Derby. It uh, they they love Reckless. They're like, no one's taking the best horse from the Reckless. The thing is, they trained Reckless. Yeah. And Reckless listened. She listened. She listened that the bombs are okay. Well, you know, if they're firing it, they're okay. They're not bad. She knew how to avoid barbed wires. She drink, drank beer. She was going up and down the hills she, when they could have... She done that thing that they just said, the uh, off the boat thing. There we go. She made an amphibious landing. That's it, amphibious landing. Crazy. So she's one of them. It was a mile and a half course uphill through rice paddies and each horse wasn't going to have a rider and they were going to have to carry 192 pounds of ammunition. Unfortunately Damn. for everybody, Native Dancer's owner decided that they were not going to partake in this competition. Scared. So now the Marines kind of just hung out until the end of the war. Then the order comes down. Hey, pack your shit. It's time to go home. The Marines are like, cool, great, grand, wonderful. How are we going to get reckless home? At which point the leadership over at the Marine Corps is like, well, Here's the thing, we don't think that the taxpayers would appreciate spending their money to transport this horse all Come the way on. back to America, so uh, we're just gonna abandon her here. To which the nah. entire Marine Corps is like, the fuck you are. They go into full Shamurai mode. They're gonna figure out how to get Corporal Reckless back to America through the back channels, whatever it takes. So they end up getting a hold of a public company called Pacific Transport, and they convince the owner to take Reckless all the way back to America. The Good only shit. problem is Pacific Transport doesn't go to South Korea, the closest he can get is to Japan. Okay, cool. Now we just have to get Reckless from South Korea to Japan. Reckless's platoon then gets a hold of the Marine Corps Air Wing, and they convince those Marines to let them smuggle Reckless onto a cargo plane. I love how, like, Committed much they, they want to yeah. help Reckless. That she's not just a horse to them. No. They are lit she is part of the boys. Yeah, she is. <laughs> no, but technically, she helped a Massively. lot. Because if she wasn't there... oh. The wounded uh, militants, they wouldn't be able they to come down the hill. They would have stayed up the hill. And also, the amount of ammunition that was taken up, they wouldn't allowed be able them, to do allowed that. Allowed them to actually fight yeah, back a big she army. She helped them big time. And they're not letting her just no. leave her like that. No way going from South Korea to Japan. From there, they get reckless onto the Pacific transport ship. They take them all the way back to San Francisco where the Marines are gonna re-meet back up with reckless. Okay, fast forward, the Marines make it to San Francisco. The Pacific transport ship makes it to San Francisco. The Marines go there to pick up reckless, at which point they find out that customs beat them there and customs Stop. called the Department of Agriculture. And the Department of Agriculture said, mm -mm, we're gonna have this horse destroyed because she could have diseases. The no Marines way. then explained to this guy from the Department of Agriculture, look, this is a war hero. You're not killing this horse. She's coming with us. At which point the Department of Agriculture guy is like, oh no, she's staying here and we're gonna have her destroyed. Now the Marines are kind of looking around at each other. They're looking at this pencil pusher from the Department of Agriculture and the Marines without saying a word have just communicated with their eyes. We're actually going to have to kill this guy and hide the body. Department of Agriculture guy <laughs> yeah, is finally starting to piece together how quickly and how far this might escalate. And he finally comes to his senses and he's like, okay, look, maybe, just maybe, I'll take a blood sample. I'll take it to the lab. And if she doesn't have any diseases, we'll release her. To which thing is, these people that wasn't there in the war, they think that's just some random horse that 
they don't understand she literally was a she saved so many lives like you mentioned earlier if they knew that to the extent without them they might think it's exaggerated they might be like oh they're just saying certain things to keep the horse no this horse is legit a war the hero. thing is unfortunately with a lot of humans they see an animal as just an animal, just an animal. whereas with the uh, soldiers she helped them they, they, they let her go they felt sad sending her up the hill thinking she might die let and this alone. is the last time that they're gonna see them yeah. so they grew an attachment with them but unfortunately there's these people they don't they go, oh, it's just an animal yeah. just get rid of it so the marines are like that's a solid call so the guy takes a blood sample says it'll take me about a week to get the results go ahead and just leave the horse here you guys can head out at which the Marines said, nah, we're going to stay with the horse. That's the agriculture it. guy is like, that's not necessary. And the Marines are like, oh, yes, yeah. it is. Because at this point, the Marines have come to the conclusion that the communists were trying to kill reckless for food and American bureaucracy <laughs> is trying to kill reckless just for fun. And they cannot let her out of their sight ever again. So agriculture guy gets a blood sample. He leaves. The Marines hang out with the horse for a little while. And then they're like, oh, hey. There's a Marine Corps ball tonight. Reckless is a Marine. Let's go. Then they smuggled <laughs> Reckless out of the ship. Then they smuggled her out of the port. Then somehow they got her all the way across San Francisco into the building, up the freight elevator, and they made it to the Marine Corps ball. Reckless walks in and she has just given every Marine in that room the excuse they were looking oh for to God. get absolutely hammered. Everybody's drinking beer, eating cake, including Corporal Reckless and Reckless. Nah, Reckless lived a better life than all of us. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> what the hell? She's and everyone loves yeah. This is also eating all the flower decorations. It's a great time. Everybody wakes up the next morning, super hungover. They all go out, they get breakfast, bacon, eggs, give some to Reckless. Now, here's the problem. They kind of have smuggled this horse out and they don't know what to do with it. They also can't let the government find out where the horse is yeah. because the government is actively trying to destroy her for no reason. Then once Reckless gets to Camp Pendleton, the American public finds out that Reckless made it home and everybody's super pumped. They want to know all about it. The news is getting involved. America is celebrating because fucking America's war horse made it home. This is awesome. At which point the high ranking Marine officers that were going to abandon her are like, holy shit. Wow. What a great idea. You guys smuggled her all the way here and uh, we're just going to take credit for it because this is going really well for us. We had no idea that the American... Just because they saw the reaction, they're like, you know what, let's take credit for this when they're the ones... The American public oh. would be okay with us doing the right thing and bringing a war hero home. We thought the American public wanted us spending millions and billions of dollars teaching fucking pigeons how to drive missiles and strapping napalm bombs onto bats and shit. We had no idea that doing the right thing would be so popular. So then they throw a big parade, they have a big ceremony, Reckless gets promoted to E5, Sergeant in the Marine Corps, they hook wow. her up with this cool ass blanket, she gets awarded two purple hearts, one for each piece of shrapnel she took during the Battle of Outpost Vegas. Oh, it's damn. a huge deal. She starts doing commercials, endorsements. The rule with that was she doesn't work for free. She's yeah. willing to do charity events for free. Anything else, if somebody wanted her to endorse a product, it had to be a product she actually liked. If it was food, it better be food she liked. If it was a drink, Not cabbage. it better be a drink Not that cabbage. she liked drinking. Otherwise, she wasn't going to do it. And those companies had to pay $1,000 for the privilege of working with someone. Sergeant Reckless. 1,000 back then was a lot as of well. Course. So that's a prestige horse now. Yeah. And that money went to a charity for the Marine Corps. And here's the thing with Reckless being a sergeant. Most animals are like, oh, they're such and such rank. They're this rank, but they're not actually that rank. It's just like a symbolic thing. With Reckless, it was not a symbolic thing. The Marines treated her like she was truly and legitimately a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Nobody that was I a lower that. rank than her was allowed to give her orders or tell her what to do. Okay? <laughs> yes, Sergeant Reckless. Hey, imagine trying to like instruct Sergeant Reckless because it's in your way. Or she's in your way, and she's like, she gives you the look. Like, Who are you talking uh, to? Excuse me, madam. Can I walk past, please? She know your know your rank. Flick her hair, whip her tail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. Okay. If the privates were standing around eating food and stuff, and Reckless wandered up and nudged one, that was an order to share some food. An and order. That private needed to obey it. She was given her own private stable right outside wow. the post commander's house, and there was a standing order that she was never to carry anything heavier than her blanket ever again. Sergeant oh, Reckless wow, even had cute. an assistant. Every time they got a batch of new recruits, they would find out who the farm kid was, and he would be tasked with taking care of Sergeant Reckless. Now, part farm of taking kids. care. 
Sarah Sergeant Reckless was taking her out for her daily exercise. Now, how do you exercise a horse if you can't ride a horse because there's a standing order that she can't carry anything heavier than her blanket? And even if she could, you wouldn't be allowed to ride her because she's a higher rank than you. You have to yeah. work I have no idea. Neither did the Marine Corps, so they told this private fucking figure it out. So this kid <laughs> just had to start running next to Reckless yeah. five miles a day, every day. Duh. And this pattern carried on. Every time a new kid came, he just started running five miles a day with Reckless. That's some serious cardio for the new kid though. The farmer kid better get some cardio up. Yeah. <laughs> Reckless, and it became a running joke Jesus Christ, literally a running joke that whoever was taking care of Reckless was the most in shape Marine. Yeah, in the 100%. Marine Corps. After a little while, the PR started to die down, but the high ranking officers in the Marine Corps didn't want that to happen because having the Marine Corps in the headlines all the time was really good. So they concocted a plan to stay in the headlines even longer. They were going to get some badass, thoroughbred, Kentucky Derby winning racehorse in here to have a kid with Sergeant Reckless. So that's exactly oh, what they damn. do. They find the thoroughbred horse they're gonna breed her with. They hire this PR firm getting ready for all the news and publicity and blah, blah, blah. And then in true military fashion, the officers then proceed to not tell anybody that they fucking should. You know, like the private that's in charge of taking care of Sergeant Reckless. So from his perspective, one day he gets an order seemingly for no fucking reason to take Sergeant Reckless over to the normal horse stables, which never ever happens and stick her into an empty pen. So that's what he does. And he's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna like go get lunch now or take a shit or whatever. So he leaves for a minute and one of the other Marines comes by and then sticks just your normal garden variety Marine bucking horse in the same pen as Reckless, not knowing it was Reckless because Reckless is never in those pens anyways. So oh. fast forward a little bit, Sergeant Reckless's assistant comes back and Reckless and this bucking horse are midway through a horizontal jogging session and he's not about to get in there and stop it. Okay, now Sergeant Reckless's assistant is God. having a full on panic attack because Sergeant Reckless, the pride of the Marine Corps, is currently getting taken to pound town on his watch and he is definitely gonna be in trouble for it. That's so as bad. soon as they finish, he runs in, gets Reckless, takes her in the barn, he's brushing out her mane, he's getting the scratches off of her sides, he's trying to hide all the evidence. And then while they're in the barn taking care of that, that other bucking horse gets taken out of the pen and this big old fancy truck pulls up with this big old fancy trailer and this big ass Kentucky Derby winning thoroughbred racehorse. So she... Got yeah, with a random normal horse when mm -hmm. this fancy one's come now, which is like a pure breed or something, you know. Gets unloaded and put in the pen that Reckless was just in. He gets done cleaning Reckless up in the barn, takes her out, and everybody's like, "Bro, what are you doing? Reckless is supposed to be in there with this other horse." Get him in there. So then all those guys leave to get lunch or do whatever. And Sergeant Reckless's assistant is like, okay, there's no way I'm leaving. I'm not going to have this happen again. I'm going to stay here the entire time and make sure there's no hanky panky. There'll be no riding the baloney pony around here ever again. I got to make sure this does not happen. So he sits there and cock blocks this thoroughbred the entire time. So as far as he's concerned, mission accomplished. Nobody ever needs to know that Reckless got deflowered on his watch. It's going to be fine. Then fast nah. forward 28 days later, he shows up at Reckless's stable first thing in the morning to take care of her. And there's a bunch of high ranking military officers and a bunch of news crews right outside the stable. He rolls up like, Shut up, baby. What's, uh, what's going on? And the general is like, Reckless is pregnant. And he's like, oh, oh OK, is that that's a good thing. And they're like, yeah, no, that's great. That's a terrific thing. At this point, the news crews have kind of put together that this is a kid in charge of taking care of Sergeant Reckless. So one of them yells out, hey, what's the name of that thoroughbred racehorse that she's having the baby with again? Uh... At which point he just responds like, what are you talking about? I don't know its name. It was just one of the random marine bucking horses we had in the pen. Uh, Record no. scratch, dead silence pure confusion the general grabs this private yanks him around the corner of the stable uh. like what the fuck did you just say so he explains to the general everything that happened and the general is like you idiot reckless was supposed to sleep with that big ass thoroughbred racehorse to which he's like well, somebody should have told me that. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so now the plan is officially ruined. The news crews leave and the PR firm has to figure out how to piece this thing back together. And the plan they come up with is to get a big ass sign and put it up on the hill by Camp Pendleton. And the sign simply says, it's a 
dot, dot, dot. Yeah, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down in the plot twist that absolutely nobody saw coming, the United States Marine Corps is actually responsible for inventing gender reveals. And that's how they still managed to generate a bunch of hype for Sergeant okay, Reckless' yes, kid, ever. getting the entire world to speculate as to whether or not it was going to be a boy or a girl. The pregnancy goes great. She goes on to give Aww. birth to a cult, aka a boy. They go out, write boy in big blue letters on their sign, and then the Marines throw a big ass party because they're amped, unwittingly throwing the world's first ever gender reveal party, which I'm- oh, That's oh, actually almost. crazy, you know? <laughs> That's legit the first gender reveal party. Aww. Oh. Because it was never, In back then it was never a thing. Ah. Oh. Like, so they had done it, a gender reveal party for a horse and it became a thing. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to hold Sergeant against the Marine Corps forever. But now everybody wants to know, what are we going to name this young Colt? So the high ranking Marine officers step in again and they're like, I have another great PR idea. Let's have a competition where all the Marines can submit their ideas for names. We'll pick the best one and that guy can win a week of leave brilliant idea so that's like exactly that. what they do hundreds of marines send in their ideas for names the front runners were like semper fi freedom liberty pretty generic stuff but that's what you have to do when you have a big mm. public figure like sergeant reckless liberty baby nice. but the commanding officer in charge is just like i don't like any of these names i'm gonna name it myself so he uh. just decides that he's gonna pick a random private and be like hey you're you're the winner even though you didn't pick the name but i'm just gonna say you're the winner so i don't look like an asshole and then he named the cult fearless which that's a great name i'm just not gonna lie that's pretty badass yeah he saw the names was like nah yeah. This has a better name. Fearless. Fearless is I like cool. that. Getting well, really, well. really jaded with bureaucrats and high-ranking officers in this video for some reason. Sorry about that. Anyways, fast forward a couple years, 1959, Sergeant Reckless is now getting promoted to Staff Sergeant Reckless E6. There's a 1,700-man parade, a 19-gun salute. The Marines make a huge deal out of it because, well... Reckless deserves it. So that's what they do. And in the crowd that day was none other than the new private fearless of the United States Marine Corps, which I thought was pretty cool. Later that year, she would give birth to another boy named Dauntless. And then a couple years after that, she would give birth to yet another boy wow. named Chesty, named after Chesty Puller, the most decorated Marine of all time. And as rumor has it, the last Marine to ever ride Reckless. From there, Sergeant wow. Reckless would retire and spend the rest of her life living on Camp Pendleton as the highly regarded, highly respected war hero that she was before passing away in 1968. So in conclusion, this has been the story of Sergeant Reckless, the hero of Outpost That's Vegas, one. America's That's greatest war horse, the four-legged Marine that fought during the Korean War, which is commonly referred to as the Forgotten War. But as is the case with most of us, it's not that we forgot it, it's that we were never taught about it in the first place. So, Sergeant Reckless and her sons. What did you think of Sergeant Reckless? She's badass. I want to be just like her. <laughs> when we go to the States, we have to visit her statue. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Is that do you, is that statue going to be in like a, uh, a Navy camp, do you think? Or would that be out That's for the true. public? Comment below, you guys might know. Would that be somewhere we could actually visit? Or is it like, obviously, in a base that there's no access? Because that would be very cool. I'd actually take a selfie with that. Oh, Reckless. Reckless had a story, man. Her story was more wild than a lot of people. Reckless was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for recommending the video. This was a recommendation. Keep commenting below different videos for us to react to. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We're nearly at 50k, so that'll be appreciated. For now, peace out. Bye.